So at this century, at this current situation, I am in possession of a stolen motorcycle, and I have no idea what to do about it. Hey guys, I'm Sean from Bikes and Beards, and at the time of all this was happening, I was currently living in Georgia, not Pennsylvania, where I live right now. And this was about 2012, maybe 2011. Summer. I had just graduated college. I was actually going to a, a little Bible college down in North Georgia. I was selling a lot of bikes. I was hooked up with another dealership or a company that were, they were buying bikes and they were parting them out and selling them on eBay. And I was one of their buyers. I also had a couple other dealerships uh, in that, in that uh, North Georgia area that I was selling bikes to. And at, at the time, I was buying and selling about 100 bikes a year, maybe a, you know one, two, or three per week, depending on how good the week was. Um, it was a lot of fun. I got, I got to try a lot of new bikes, mostly sport bikes at the time. And it was not uncommon. It was not uncommon for me to meet a guy in a parking lot late at night with a lot of cash and him bringing the bike in the title. This was Georgia. So at the time you did not need to have a, uh, your, your title notarized. You just kind of sign out of it. You do a bill of sale, you sign into it. Everything is good. That's just how it was back then. And you also didn't pay any sales tax if you were uh, from a private to private sale. But I was also under a dealership license, so I didn't have to pay sales tax anyway. I was actually going from the seller to the dealership. So this was an instance where, um, at the time, I had bought a lot of bikes. I felt very experienced about this. I had not gotten ripped off yet. And I was getting pretty, I was getting pretty good at what I did. So I'm meeting this guy at a Walmart parking lot somewhere around Buckhead. And... Of uh, you know, probably 10 o'clock at night. I, I, I roll up, he rolls up, there's the bike, 2008 Yamaha R1. Good looking bike, I didn't notice anything. I look at the title, title looks good. I did fail to do a couple things that I was doing previously, and I did, I did always did after this, was I never really compared the, actually I did, no I did that. I compared, so then I compared the VIN, the last four on the title, with the last four on the neck. Everything checked out. I bring the bike back. I ride it around for a couple days. I'm actually meeting up with a new dealership that wants to start working with me. This is the, this is the icebreaker trip. I've got three or four bikes that he wants to buy and I want to sell them. So I, I go up there. I got the bike on the trailer. Uh, four bikes on the trailer. I go to meet this guy. Uh, Everything is good. He's, he's pumped about all these bikes. I, I'm going to make money. He's going to make money. He starts looking at the title work and comes back to me and says, uh, this number was changed from a, from like a, a one to an eight. And I'm, I'm oh, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm about to freak out. I, you're right. Title was for a different year Yamaha motorcycle. And what had happened was they had a title for a bike, a Yamaha, and then they went and re-stamped the frame. So all while this is happening, this is the icebreaker deal. This is the first deal I'm doing with this guy. Now, if I had sold 20, 30 bikes to him before and then this would happen, he would have known who I was. He'd have been, oh, man, this sucks. I'm sorry this happened. I'm not going to buy your bike, of course. But this was the icebreaker deal. I kind of looked at him, and I was like, so this, so we're not working together, are we? Ever. And he was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I mean, he could have called the cops on me. I don't know. So I take the bike back. I just got out of college. I'm not making very much money at this point. I think I had 40 700 bucks in the bike maybe at low miles i start looking at it a little bit closer i realize it's all aftermarket body things are not looking well so at this century at this current situation i am in possession of a stolen motorcycle and i have no idea what to do about it so i do the only thing i can think of i call the police state i call the police i i i got it in my mind i'm like if this was someone's motorcycle someone Someone worked for this. Someone loved this bike. Someone spent their hard-earned money on this bike. And then someone else stole it. Just because I was dumb and bought it does not mean that it's not it's still someone else's motorcycle. So I call the police department. And I tell them, I tell them exactly what happened. I met a kid and, and the VIN number is re-stamped on the frame. And the sticker on the side of the frame is taken off and all these things. And to my surprise, the police officer says, there's nothing we can do. That's your bike now. There's no way that we can connect if, if all the fairings are taken off, if the, the vid on the neck is, re, is re-stamped, if the sticker on the side is taken off, 
there's no way we could ever figure out who actually owned that bike. And that's, so that's what he told me. At this point, I'm gonna rode around for a little while um, and I ended up selling it, I ended up listing it online for exactly what, maybe what I had into it, or maybe less than what I had into it. And then I just disclosed everything about it. This bike was a stolen bike. Here's what happened. I called the cops. Here's what they said, blah, blah, blah. You can ride it, you can register it, all these things. You know, just explain to people, it's kind of a sketchy deal, but I tried to turn I tried to turn it in, I tried to give it back, I tried to make it right. There's nothing, there's nothing you can't make it any more right than what it is. I ended up selling it to a uh, military guy who was a, a, co a competitive long distance shooter, and we traded for about three guns and three thousand dollars worth of cash. And he's pumped. I haven't I haven't heard a bike, seen the bike since. The second time I bought a not not I didn't buy it. I almost bought a stolen bike. Was in the same area. Um, I was living in Georgia, still living in Georgia at the time. I go meet some guy in Atlanta. And I knew the bike didn't have a title. I knew it had no title. So I tell the guy, all right, let's meet up really, really close to the police station. And so we, we meet up at a Turkey Hill, like a block away from the police station. I, I'm like, I want to I told the guy, it's two guys. I'm buying it from two, there's two guys there. I'm, I said, I am going to test drive this bike to the police station. If you, or I'm going to test drive the bike to the police station and get them to verify the VIN number for me to make sure it's not stolen. They're like, oh yeah, no problem, no problem. I, I, maybe they didn't think I was going to do it. I don't know. Uh, that was a 2006 GSXR 750, very similar to my track bike somewhere back there. So I do that. I hop on the bike. I drive to the police station. I walk inside the police, the police station. I say, hey, listen, I'm looking at buying a bike. I explained I explain to them the situation. I'm looking at buying a bike. I'm buying it from these guys. And I want to make sure this bike's not stolen before I buy the bike. Cops come out. They run the VIN. It's taking a little while. No one gets back to me. It's taking a little while. I'm just going to wait in there. I'm sitting in there. And then I realize that they're, they're, they're gonna, they, they detain me now. They're like, oh, we need you to come in. Okay. So they bring me in. I'm sitting in a room. I explain my story to one guy. I explain my story to another guy about two hours later. I'm on my phone. I don't know. No one's picking up the phone. I'm, I'm trying to call people like, hey, I need help. Um, so the only thing I could think of doing was leave a Facebook, post a Facebook message on my, on my Facebook page saying, might be going to prison. Here's the location of my van. I've got $3,500 cash in it if you need to bail me out. As soon as I posted that, about five minutes later, my dad gives me a call really, really quick. He's like, take that, take that, take that message down. This does not sound good for you. I explained to the, the, the police officers one more time. I'm like, the guys who are selling me the bike are right down there. They're next to my van. They're waiting for me to come back. I, why would I bring the bike to you? Why would, I, why would I steal the bike, knowing it's stolen, bring it to you, and ask you to run the VIN number for it? So they, they finally, they were like, well, that makes sense. Um, while I'm sitting in holding... I was never in a jail, but I, was, I couldn't leave, I guess. While I was sitting and holding, uh, the two guys who were going to sell me a bike, I see them walk, walk past the window. They let me leave. I don't know what happened with that deal since. Um, I have bought bikes without titles by doing the same thing. You just verify that it's not been stolen, and then there is a process to go about to getting a bike that does not have a title, but you better make sure you buy the bike really cheap. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys later.